Good morning. We're just going to give folks a moment to join from the waiting room. As a reminder, please remain on mute unless or until you are appearing or testifying before the board. Give just another moment to make sure everyone has connected, uh, has joined from the waiting room and has connected to audio. Good morning, this is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the licensing board. Today I am joined by Commissioner Liam Curran and Com Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on this morning's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the licensee, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department, and whether there are any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify. I will then swear in all parties. After that, the police report will be read into the record, and the licensee or their representative will have the opportunity to make a brief statement, followed by questions by the chair and commissioners. Again, all testimony will be limited only to those individuals with firsthand personal knowledge of the alleged incident. Begin with the first item on this morning's agenda, calling item number one, the 15 LaGrange Street Corporation doing business as the Glass Slipper, located at 22 LaGrange Street, dated the incident in December 11th, 2022, theft employee on patron at establishment in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, is anybody here on behalf of the glass slipper? We will take a second call. Calling item number two, the Boston Leco Corp doing business as Legacy Boston located at 71 to 79 Warrington Street. Dated the incident August 6, 2022, assault and battery patron on employee in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Stephen Barboza. Kirsty Clark. I'm sorry, um, did you hear me? I was the first uh, call, Mr. Green. We did not hear you. Sorry, Attorney Jabor. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you. There may have been a problem uh, muting or unmuting yourself. Okay. Yeah, it might, might have been. Sorry about that. Great. With that, and apologies to item number two, we'll move back to the top of the agenda um, now that we have established who is present. Back to item number one, uh, 15 LaGrange Street Corporation doing business as the Glass Slipper, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Thank you again. My name is Attorney George Shabor. I represent the licensee. With me is Alan Goldstein, the manager, present with me in my office. Thank you very much. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Detective James Walsh from Area A1. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? And Attorney Jabor, could you please um, move your camera so we can see Mr. Goldstein? Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Detective Walsh. Uh, if you could please proceed with reading the uh, police report into the record. Boston Police Detectives Walsh and Keneally investigated a wire fraud incident that occurred at the Glass Slipper at 22 LaGrange Street, Boston, on Thursday, December 8th, 2022. The following is a summary of the initial incident. On Sunday, December 11th, 2022, about 4.20 p.m., Officer Ryan of the Alpha Delta 96 took a walk-in police report from victim Douglas Vinitsky. The victim reported that he had gone to the glass slipper located at 22 LaGrange Street on December 8th. 
He was in the company of one of the employees at that location, the suspect Jasmine Capel. Suspect acquired his cell phone and then zelled herself $320 without his permission. The victim has since changed his Zell password. The owner of the glass slipper had been notified and stated he had he has had complaints about this female employer, Jasmine Capel, before. A1 detectives investigating this incident spoke with the victim, Douglas Vinitsky, who provided bank statements, including an unauthorized Bank of America Zell transaction on December 8th, 2022, in the amount of $320 to the merchant named Jasmine. After speaking with the victim, <clears throat> He stated he paid for a lap dance with his Bank of America debit card downstairs before heading up to the third floor VIP room for his lap dance. The victim stated he believed the suspect retrieved his phone from his pocket and zelled herself the money from his Bank of America application. The victim said he has a fingerprint password to get into his phone as well as his Bank of America application. The victim thought potentially the bank application was still open when the suspect had his phone. The victim stated he spent a lot of money, approximately $2,493 at the glass slipper that particular night and would have paid extra with his card, not through the Zelle on his Bank of America app. The victim emailed Detective Walsh all of his bank transactions at the glass slipper that night. There was no video available from the incident. The suspect, Jasmine Capel, was fired from the glass slipper. Detectives responded to the glass slipper on December 13th and spoke with manager Albert Goldstein, who stated there have been accusations of this type of incident that have occurred in the past and Capel has since been fired. Detective Wall spoke with, uh, with suspect Jasmine Capel on the phone, who stated she would send the victim back the money, but to this point had not done so. This matter was sent to the, to the courts for a clerk magistrate hearing uh, for charges of larceny under $1,200. Uh, the, this matter went to a clerk magistrate hearing uh, with testimony from the victim and the suspect, and the courts determined that the victim was not credible in this matter. Thank you, Detective Walsh. Attorney Jabor, would you like to address the alleged incident? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, the first thing is I just want to correct the record. Um, there was a statement that the owner had indicated there was incidents like this in the past and uh, we dispute that fact although it's not re re terribly relevant but just to have an accurate record the owner has since passed away and um, uh, they couldn't have spoken to him at the time I think he was ill in any event um, as uh, Detective Walsh has indicated once we became aware of the incident the employee was fired within five days and in addition to that um, that fact that uh, my client uh, is, is very vigilant in policing the employees and trying to prevent any type of illegal or improper behavior from happening. And um, I would respectfully ask the board to uh, find no violation. Again, just to repeat myself, the employee was fired and we were not aware of the fact that what she was doing was wrong. But in any event, as Detective Walsh has indicated, um, the victim was not found credible and um, therefore with all that said uh, again I repeat myself that I'd like the court, the board most respectfully to find no violation. Thank you Attorney Jabor. We'll move to any questions from the board starting with Chairman Joyce. Do you have any questions of the licensee or the detective? How long did this employee work there? Five years. About five years. Was there any disciplinary action against this employee before? No. And by the way, um, um, Madam Chairman, after she was fired, she is uh, hiring an attorney and is suing, is suing my client for whatever that's worth. And you're stipulating that it's an incorrect statement that they're aware that she had done this before? She is not, we were not, my client indicates that we're not aware that she has done this before. Otherwise, okay. she would be fired sooner because that's not good for my client's uh, business or reputation. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Carmen, any questions? Nothing for me, thank you. Commissioner Saxon? None at this time, thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you, Mr. Green. Have a great day, everybody. And you.
Calling item number two, the Boston Lego Corp doing business as Legacy Boston, located at 71 to 79 Warrington Street. Dated the incident August 6, 2022, assault and battery, patron and employee in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Kirsty Clark. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Clark, is it possible to turn your camera on so we can see you and swear you in? Great. Yes. Stephen Barboza. Thank you. Same. Thank you, Mr. Barboza. We can see you. Uh, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, Officer Murray. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Can you all please raise your right hand? Oh, sorry. Uh, sir, you haven't uh, identified yourself uh, with Motorola Edge 5G. I'm going to ask you to unmute if you could please identify yourself if you're going to provide testimony. Uh, George Kalivas. George Kalivas, thank you. Thank you. Can you all once again, uh, all who are planning to testify, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. 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 Thank you very much, Officer Murray. If you could please proceed reading the police report into the record. About 1.35 a.m. on Saturday, August 6, 2022, Officers Murray and Rooney responded to a radio call for an assault and battery in progress at 276 Tremont Street, Boston, also responding with Sergeant Downey and Officer Coleman. Upon arrival, the officers were directed to a male later identified as Sean Stellion, who was visibly upset. Stellion stated that he and his friends were trying to go into the club, and when, when he went in, he got punched and was dragged up the stairs. The officers observed blood coming from Stellion's nose. Stellion was unable to provide a, a description of who had done this, but just that it was someone in the club and further stated it was multiple people. When asked again what occurred, Stellion stated he went to the club and his friend gave them $40 and Stellion gave them 10. Stellion then stated he was told to get out and was only given $30 of the 50. Stellion stated he wanted his $20 back, so he shoved, quote, them, and then they pushed him the officer then confirmed with Stellium that he was sh that he shoved them first and he shook his head and said no. Stellium stated he shoved them after he was punched. Stellium stated, said again he was punched in the face and dragged up the stairs. Stellium declined EMS. The officer spoke to Theo Zucci and Jonathan Pastor, who stated that he paid the cover charge and the worker who took the money did not like the way he gave it to them and were not going to let them in. Zucci stated he got punched when he was outside of 275 Charmont State. Zucci pointed the male who had punched him, who the officer observed to be an employee of 275 Charmont. Zucci pointed to his next area, showing the officer where he was punched. Zucci declined the need for EMS. The officer spoke with the male Zucci pointed to, identified as Giovanni Grillian. Grillian stated he let Zucci into the club, and about two minutes after he had let them let him in, he got kicked out. Grillian was not sure what happened. That led to this because he was upstairs the whole night. Grillian said that outside Zucci threatened him saying things such as, quote, if you was in my neighborhood, you know what would happen to you, end quote. Quote, I'm from the Bronx. I would have shot you in the face, end quote. Grillian told Zucci it was time to go home and at no point did it turn physical. The officer spoke to Steven Barboza who stated he was involved in bringing Stellion upstairs. Barboza stated Stellion wanted to pay to get into the club and the boss advised them they were closed. Barboza stated Stellion then threw the money at the register. The owner gave him the money back and Stellion then shoved the owner. Barboza stated that Stellion was claiming he did not get all the money back. Barboza escorted Stellion upstairs and throughout the process, Stellion was fighting with them to get upstairs. Barboza took Stellion's arm and put it behind his back when they got to the second story coming up the stairs Stallion fell, which Barboza then observed Stallion to be bleeding from his hands and nose. Stallion then continued to fight with Barboza when he was escorted out. Stallion proceeded to tell Barboza that, quote, he was going to take pictures, his dad was a lawyer, and they own 45 Marriott's, and they're going to sue them, end quote. Barboza stated Stallion and his friends continued to antagonize him and the staff. The officer spoke to Charles Del Pito, who stated they collect money downstairs and there was a $40 cover. Del Polito stated the money was thrown at an employee when they were told to leave. Del Polito stated an argument ensued when Stellion pushed him. Del Polito said, stated he was 71 years old. 
Sergeant Downey issued a license premise inspection onus. Thank you, Officer Murray. Uh, Ms. Clark, Mr. Barboza, Mr. Kalibis, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yes, so we were preparing to close the box office for the evening. Um, I was getting ready to cash out my register when a group of gentlemen approached me and they wanted to enter the club. I told them the admission, um, the entry fee to come in. They weren't too happy about that. I tried to negotiate with them like a lower rate because it was closer to the evening of the night. At that point, they started talking to one another. And I don't know what transpired from there, but they were unhappy that they still had to pay an admission to come into the club. So then they proceeded to like throw the money in my face. And at that point I was upset. So I'm like, you guys are not gonna come into the club. Um, Chucky Del Prito was there and whisk, uh, witnessed the incident. And um, that's when they started to get combative and they shoved Chucky into the wall. From there, um, security tried to subdue the gentlemen that were acting out of order. And from there, that's when the incident, you know, they got even more upset and um, Stephen Barboza proceeded to, um, excuse me, escort them off of the premises. Thank you, Mr. Barboza, Mr. Kalibas, anything further you would like to add for the board? No, I, I don't have anything further to add. I, I know Chucky, uh, he just, he was just trying to call me a minute ago. I think he's trying to get on. Uh, uh, but he, he uh, with his phone, he, he's not with us right now, but uh, um, I didn't observe the incident, but I, I'm well aware of everything that, that happened. And, and uh, uh, what was just told to you was basically uh, what had happened. Uh, you know, we, we called the police uh, when uh, we thought things were going to get out of control and then that's when the police showed up. This is Charles Del Pidio. I don't know if you can hear me. We can hear you, Mr. Del Pidio. You have not been sworn in yet, and it looks like you're calling in from a phone. I don't suppose it's possible to have any visual turn your camera on, is it? Boy, I'm trying. If you could try quickly. If not, I'll, I'll ask you to affirm for us. Uh, oh, there we go. How's that? There Mr. Go. Del Pidio, can you please raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Uh, please proceed with your testimony. The real question I really have here is that where were these guys before they came to us? Um, you know, we were all set to let them in, but all of a sudden they got combated and they threw the money in their face and that would not be tolerated, not by any standards at any business. Uh, I did return their money and then they shoved me against the wall and then they were brought upstairs. And that basically is the whole thing. And, and Madam Chairman, I, I know you and I have talked many times about cameras. Uh, the, our cameras are all in, especially in this area, but they weren't in as of this. This was August of 2022, but I made sure now that I have a camera directly into this area so if we ever have any other problems, we will be on camera. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bubba, was there anything further you wanted to add? I see you just unmuted yourself. The, um, everything they said, that's exactly what happened. When I, was, when I heard the radio call for, for the situation, as I was going to the altercation, I watched the mail shove Chuck Del Pidio. So once I seen the mail, Stuff Chuck Del Pidio. I approached the mail. I told him, "Listen, the night is over. The, the my boss doesn't want to allow you inside. You're not supposed to push him. You have to go." So that's when he started getting physical. So once he got physical, I started removing him from the club. As it's read in the report, I took the subject upstairs. He kept getting physical with me on the whole way upstairs, grab, trying to grab the railing. So then that's when I grabbed one of his arms, put it behind his back, and he's still grabbing the railing, holding it, trying not to leave. And then we both slipped on the stairs and fell. I guess he cut his finger, was trying to hold the railing, and when we fell, and then his nose, his face hit the stairs, took him outside, and as we took him outside, he just kept antagonizing the security over and over. No physical altercation happened while we were outside of the establishment. Everything was just verbal. 
Thank you, Ms. Robosa. Anything further from the licensee before we move to questions? Thank you. I'll begin with Chairman Joyce. Do you have any questions of the licensee or the officer? I do. Why did you bring the patron upstairs instead of escorting him outside? He was brought upstairs because that's where the entrance is and the exit. Okay. I'm not familiar with the layout. Yeah. So he so was in the basement. The right Yes, yes, the register is downstairs. In order for you to enter and leave the and to leave the club, you have to go up up, up two flights of stairs. So he was downstairs, and and when the altercation happened and me escorting him outside, I have okay. to take him up two flights of stairs. Okay, that's helpful. Then, what in general, if you could summarize for me, what your um, policy is for removing a patron? Well, first of all, there is no such thing as punching with my crew. And if anybody should ever punch somebody, they would be fired immediately. I am on this constantly with the staff because you have doormen coming and going, coming and going. And this crew that I have right now has been with me a while and they know exactly what I want. And I will not allow anybody to put their hands on somebody. Okay. It's unfortunate that this happened, but it seems to me that we got these guys after they've been out all night and then they came here and this is what happened. It's unfortunate, but it's totally unfortunate. Okay, okay I have no other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Any questions? I have nothing further. Thank you. Commissioner Saxon, any questions? Nothing from me. Thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number Thank three, you. which uh, is you. the same, same licensee, the Boston Lego Corp doing business as Legacy Boston, located at 71 to 79 Warrington Street. Date of this incident is uh, December 2nd, 2022. Intoxicated patron on premise in violation of Math General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good to go. Well, let me know if anything has to be done. Excuse me. Who uh, is George Kalevis. Thank you, Mr. Kalevis. Terrence Gathers. Mr. Gathers, would it be possible to uh, turn on a camera so we can see you and swear you in? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to connect. I am. I had to call the board and call in, in on the phone. phone. All right, thank you. Yes. Uh, can you please affirm for the board that you will raise your right hand when asked to do so? Yes. Thank you. Uh, anybody else present on behalf of the licensee on this violation? Charles Del Pidio. Thank you, Mr. Del Pidio. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, if Officer Alvin isn't present, uh, Lieutenant Detective Troy. Thank you, Lieutenant. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the uh, alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Can you all please raise your right hand? And Mr. Gathers, can you please affirm for us that you are doing so as well? I do. Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you, Lieutenant Detective Troy. If you could please proceed with reading the police report. Uh, reading from a report authored by uh, Officer Siobhan Albin on um, December 2nd, 2020. It reads as follows. At 1.14 a.m. on Friday, December 2nd, 2022, Officer Albin responded to a radio call for an unconscious male at Legacy Line Club, uh, 79 Warrington Street in the Theater District. On arrival, uh, officer spoke to uh, Terence Gathers of Legacy Management Team, Mr. Gathers, uh, escorted the officers to the basement floor where a highly intoxicated male was observed lying on the ground, unconscious on the ground. The victim, uh, then identified as I Isaiah uh, Pelez, was transported to Tufts Medical Center uh, by ambulance aid without further incident. Sergeant McHale responded, conduct a code 35 license premise inspection for intoxicated person on premise. That's the extent of the police report. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kalevis, Mr. Gathers, Mr. Del Pidio. Would you like to address the alleged incident? Terrence? Um, this is Terrence Gathers. Um, I, I'll address it. 
Um, on the night in question, um, the gentleman that we, we know him as Andrew, he's a regular customer that um, comes in after he gets out of work. And um, we had another customer come up to us as I'm trolling inside the club and said that there was someone inside the um, night in the bathroom that was, wasn't feeling well. So go inside the bathroom, you have to um, you know, call for backup and get the rest of the, you know, I had to get a, another security in there to help me and started talking to Andrew and he was just completely acting on the character. We uh, picked Andrew up and we started taking him toward the, um, cause he was inside the stall. He was completely clothed, but he was inside the stall. So we picked him up and started bringing him to the, um, toward the elevator room as I was on the phone with 911. As the EMS um, was talking to me, he started flailing around and, you know, he was, he was just acting completely out of character. And he, so to keep him from falling when we got to the elevators, the EMS lady suggested just lay him down and wait. That way he doesn't get hurt. So we did. Left him there with the other staff members, went upstairs to, to direct the EMS, the easiest way to get down to the elevator room. They came down with their cart, picked him up and took him away. Um, next morning, we got, you know, filling out my incident reports and doing my investigation. I called up Andrew and he had no recollection of anything that happened at night. And he told me he only had two drinks. And according to our records, he only had two drinks. But he was acting completely out of character. So thanks to why I immediately called 911. Thank you. Mr. Del Pinio or Mr. Kalibas, is there anything further you would like to add? Yes. Um, um, this gentleman said he was going to show up today to. Uh, to speak to you and and tell you exactly exactly what Terrence just said. Terrence, do you know if he's here? Um, I know I had great difficulty. Andrew called me up again last night, wanting to you know see if he could speak to the board himself and give his version of what happened. And um, I also I couldn't um, if I I'm I'm assuming he probably tried to get in. The same way I did and couldn't get in. Now, Terrence, this, this just Andrew is a, a steady customer that comes in all the time. Yeah, Andrew's an extremely, extremely nice kid. Young man, I'm sorry, I'm 52. <laughs> He's an extremely nice young man. And uh, that's why it was shocking to me that when he was just like one moment, he seemed like he was sleeping. Next moment, he was combative. And Andrew usually comes in after work, has a couple of drinks, and he goes home. He's one of the people that come in, you know, at, toward, he comes in after his shift, so kind of comes in and says hi to his friends. Thank you. So this was uh, shocking to us. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kalivas, anything further from you? Oh. Okay. Oh, you're, you're on mute right now. Oh, here we go. I don't know. I don't know. I've done it a couple of times. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't have anything further to add. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Kalibas. Um, we'll move on to questions from the board, starting with Chairman Joyce, if you have any questions of the licensee. You may have mentioned this, but just um, taking notes, do you know how much he was served at this location? Terrence? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that question. Could you repeat? Do you know how much this patron was served at your licensed premise? Andrew said he had two yes. drinks. He told us that. Okay. Yes. But you, but you don't have a record of that. I'm just, that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, actually, 
he actually did go in his um this is one of the reasons I wish he was able to he did go into his account and checked it and he says, No, I only had two drinks and okay. um and I and I asked him, um, you know, well, did you check, you know, and he said, Yes, I did. We um we checked, but to be honest with you, you know, when you, you have to ask the person because just because you bought two drinks doesn't mean someone didn't buy you a drink. Right. So okay. um Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. You're welcome. Commissioner Carr, any questions? No questions for me, thank you. Commissioner Saxon, any questions? None for me. Thanks. Thank you. Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have thank a good day. You. And you. Calling item number four, Fenway Johnny's LLC, doing business as Fenway Johnny's, located at 96 to 98 Brookline Ave. Date of the incident, November 6, 2022. Minors in possession, serving alcohol to persons under 21, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 34. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chairperson, um, members of the board, Attorney Seamus O'Kelly representing Fenway Johnny's. Also present, um, there should be a manager, uh, Gar McLean. I see Gar on the video, and the licensee, uh, John Karen. Thank you. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Detective Norman Texera. Boston Police Officer Joseph Campo. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? You know, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Who will be yes. reading the police report into the record? Uh, Detective Tex here. I can read the original report and the supplement. Great. Thank you. Uh, you may proceed. At about 10.56 p.m. on Saturday, uh, November 6, 2022, Officer Campot responded to a radio call for an unconscious person located at 96 Brookline Ave, which is Fenway Johnny's. Um, prior to arriving on scene, officer received information attached to the call that a 20-year-old female was possibly roofied. Upon arrival, officer observed the victim later identified uh, as being evaluated by EMS, who was already on scene. The officer observed that the victim to be unconscious and having foam around in her mouth. The victim's friend uh, was identified. She stated to officer that they arrived at the above address at around 10.15 p.m., uh, the witness states that prior to arriving at the bar, the two had a few drinks um, prior to going. Uh, the victim appeared to be in good health. It should be noted that both the victim and witness are not legally allowed to consume alcohol due to them both being underage. It is not known at this time how both victim and witness were able to enter the above establishment without proper identification. While inside of the bar, they each purchased drinks and made their way onto the dance floor area. About 45 minutes later, the victim stated to uh, the witness that she used to use the bathroom. The witness stated that shortly after the victim used the bathroom, the victim became unsteady on her feet to the point of passing out and hitting her head on the ground. Uh, the witness then called 911. Boston EMS arrived on scene and transported the victim to Beth Israel Dignes Medical Hospital. Uh, officer spoke with the general manager uh, in regards to obtaining any video footage about the incident at a later date, uh, Detective Texera was notified. Um, in the supplement to it, at about 18, 15 hours on November 10th, 2022, uh, Detective Texera responded to Fenway Johnny's at 96 Brooklyn Ave to conduct the Code 35 license permit inspection. Detective Texera met with the general manager and issued BPD license premise, vi license premise violation 026410 for minors serving under the age of 21 alcoholic beverages. Thank you, Detective Texera. Attorney O'Kelly, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yes, before I ask any questions, um, uh, Madam Chairperson and members of the board, um, this is an alleged incident that occurred uh, as you heard at uh, Detective Texera's date on or about uh, November the 6th, 2022. Um, 
I have presented, I have, I have emailed to Attorney Green this morning uh, two documents. Uh, the first document is uh, Fenway Johnny's or Fenway Johnny and West End Johnny's uh, nightlife staff guidelines uh, signed by the managers and the licensee with respect to uh, how the owners and the managers are, are conducting checks and the procedures for um, determining if, if underage patrons are on the premises. I've also sent over a letter from Dram Shop Consultants, Mike Mark Antonio, about a, a Dram Shop Consultant that occurred on March uh, the 1st, 2023, with staff. Um, I will also present um, and have delivered to the board a videotape um, that is in our possession uh, with respect to this uh, young person entering the premises um, and having uh, having her license checked at the door. We have that videotape. Uh, we have worked to retrieve that tape, and I, I'll be calling a witness, Gar McLean, to that effect. Um, hey. Uh, Detective uh, Texera, it's um, it's true that you are not uh, you, you are not the author of the report that you that you read just a few moments ago, correct? No, I'm not. Uh, would you agree with me that uh, from the report that um, this young woman and her female friend were on the premises for approximately forty five minutes and no more? About about that time, and they they um, the um, one of the uh, women told the reporting officer that they had consumed alcoholic beverages in another establishment or establishments before arriving at Fenway Johnny's that night. Is that correct? Um, upon following up with the investigation, I did speak with the witness and victim individually. So yes, they did consume alcohol. Um, prior to going to Fenway Johnny's. And um, it's fair to state that um, one of the patrons, um, she she passed out in the bathroom and her, or passed out having gone to the bathroom and her friend called the police, isn't that correct? Yes. And that an ambulance um, was brought to the scene of Fenway Johnny's where this young person was transported to the hospital, isn't that correct? Yes. I have no further questions of Detective Texera. Thank you, Attorney O'Kelly. Do you have witnesses you would like to present to the board? Yes, I'd, I'd like to call um, Gar McLean, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. McLean is, has already been sworn and um, you, you should see him on the video screen. Could you please introduce yourself, um, Mr. McLean, to the members of the board? Yeah, I'm uh, Gar McLean. I'm the manager on at uh, Fenway Johnny's and the manager on duty that night. How long have you been employed by Fenway Johnny's in a managerial capacity? Uh, about this will be my third full year doing it, so three years I'd say. Okay. Um, do you recall? Uh, do you recall the uh, the evening of November the sixth, twenty twenty two? I do. Um, basically, I heard a commotion on the radio. I looked at the cameras, saw her being uh, escorted out back. So to get, and so I went out back to see what was occurring. Um, she at that point seemed to be almost seizing up a bit, vomiting on my security staff that was carrying her out. Um, the ambulance was on its way. I believe there was an event at MGM down the street. So there was a lot of traffic. So my the owner John was with me. He went to go get help get the ambulance down. I stayed with the woman that was unconscious to make sure she was okay while her friends were panicking around me. And uh, then the ambulance got there, and that's when I talked to them. And the police followed right behind. So, and you say you were you were uh, viewing cameras uh, that night on the premises. Yeah, we have cameras set up in the office, so I was there when I heard the uh, something going on on the radio. I looked at where the ca at the cameras to see where I was going to be needed to head to. So it was coming and out of the bathroom. Okay, and um, 
that's part of your uh, function as a manager is not to be viewing the cameras in the camera room to determine what's going on yes. in the park. Correct? Yeah, I, I can't be everywhere. So it's a, a majority of the time I'll be sitting there to keep an eye on the whole premise as best I can to ensure there's no incidents. So have you retrieved videotape from that incident that night? Uh, we went back and we did get it. Uh, there's video of her entering the bar. Uh, we tried to follow her around the bar best we could once she got in through the cameras, but um, she kind of disappears with the crowd from time to time. And then I have video of her being uh, taken out the back. So you say there's video of her entering the bar that night? There is, yes. Uh, did, did anything happen uh, when she was entering the bar? Yes. When she entered, our doorman uh, scanned the IDs as is their protocol. The ID scanned green. Um, then they checked her purse just to make sure she wasn't bringing any extra alcohol in. I believe she got five to six small airplane bottles of alcohol being confiscated before she was allowed in. And um, then that was when we let her into the bar because she had nothing on her and didn't seem overly intoxicated. And so when you say, scan, so. okay, when you say um, she scanned green, could you explain to the members of the board what that means? Of course, of course, sorry. Um, our scanner will either scan red if it's a, if it registers as fake or green if it registers as a proper ID. Um, so when the ID scanned green and it matched up to her and it was assumed to be a real ID at that time. I've no, I've no further questions of, of Mr. McLean at this point. Okay. Thank you, Attorney O'Kelly. Do you have anything further for the board? I have one further witness if he wishes to be heard, Ms. Uh, John Karen. Uh, you're, you're muted, uh, Mr. Karen. I just asked him to unmute. You could unmute, please. Here we go. I'm here. Uh, could you please introduce yourself to the uh, members of the board, please? Uh, John Karen, owner, Fenway Johnny's LLC. And you were uh, previously sworn, Mr. Karen, correct? Yes. Were you on the premises on the night of November the 6th, 2022? I was. I had just arrived five minutes before and I heard the, the call. I uh, went to the location and they were assisting her down the stairs in the back. Uh, which was near the restroom. And her friends, she had, uh, I don't know, three or four friends with her. Um, we were going to call the ambulance uh, or 911. And uh, the girl said, I'll call 911. We were helping her. She was throwing up. So we said that was fine. Um, they called the ambulance. Um, as Gar said, there was a show at MGM. So Yaki Way was um, heavy traffic. I stopped the traffic at the entrance. Uh, I went down first to the ambulance, which was waiting on Brookline Ave. And then I, uh, to, to make them aware, I stopped the traffic. And uh, when all the cars had exited off Yaki Way to Brookline Ave, they proceeded down and uh, pulled down the alley in the back to a sister. I did and that twice. Was, they sent two vehicles, by the way. Okay. And she was taken. She was taken away from the scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I have nothing further for Mr. Karen. If members of the board have any questions. Thank you, Attorney O'Kelly. Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? I do. I'm going to start with Mr. McLean, who was watching the video tapes, video cameras. Um, you said that. There's video that shows her being ID'd at the front door. Her ID was scanned. Yes. Um, do you know whether or not that was a Massachusetts ID? I do not know right now um, off the top of my head. I couldn't get a good view of it from the camera, but I did see her present identification that was scanned through our system. Okay. And in your own words, can you describe what she was like when she was entering the premise? Uh, she seemed... Like she was bubbly, like a, she was very talkative to our bouncers, and she was disappointed that we took the uh, airplane bottles from her. Tried to ask for them back, they said no. 
she laughed and went back inside. It was kind of her. I feel like trying to get one over on them by flirting a little bit, but. Okay. May I add something? Uh, I'll be dropping that video stick off to uh, licensing uh, to 2.30, something like that. Thank you. Um, and also who actually called the ambulance? It's confusing. The police report says the witness did, but it sounds like- One uh, of her friends. Karen said he she, did. She called, I believe, when she was in the bathroom. Her friend, uh, the I mean, her friend called when she fell in the bathroom. So by the time we got her outside and I was able to figure out what was happening, the the uh, ambulance should already have been on the way, was already down the street, really, so. Okay. Um, do anyone from Boston Police know what kind of identification she had, whether it was Massachusetts or out of state? Or do you have that record still available, Mr. McLean? I'm not entirely sure. I believe our database doesn't go back that long. I think it re uh, assesses every three months, it clears and resets. Um, so I do not know if we have that data right on. Okay, and if if a uh, out of state ID scans green, what is your policy? Uh, we usually ask for a second set of ID, um, some other form of ID, whether it's credit card or ideally something with their uh, face on it. Okay. Um, so like a school ID or something like that. But. Okay, and from viewing the videotape, did it appear she was asked for a second form of ID? It did not, so I, I would have to assume it was, it was a mass ID, but I don't wanna okay. make assumptions. Okay, um, I'm, I have no further questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? Um, who did the actual ID? Um, one of our doormen, I believe it was, uh, who's no longer with us, uh, Rodrigo, I believe. Did, did you speak to him at the time? I did. He said he checked the ID and the other door guys there showed, for, told me they definitely were present. So I definitely, I, but I did go back to look at it to make sure they weren't, you know, lying or anything. And it, they did scan it. So yes. Yeah. But did they say what kind of ID it was? I mean, did they have anything to say about it? No, they didn't really say anything was out of the ordinary about it. So I believe it was a in state one. We've been getting a lot of the um, in state ones that turned out to be fake later on, uh, have been scanning through the system until it gets like an update or something. So it is, they're finding ways around it really right now that I'm still trying to figure yeah, out how it, to. In, in this particular case, you can't speak to it, right? I can't speak to it. All right, and at the time, did you do a search of the logs of the scanner because of what happened? Um, I don't believe I did that. I... Okay, thank you. Commissioner Saxon, any questions? I could just um, reiterate how long was she there and how many drinks she had in that particular establishment? Um, she was there only 40 minutes by what our cameras show her coming in around 10, 10 and leaving at 10, 45, give or take, so. And I only caught her having one drink, like she said, so. Thank you, anything further from the board? Uh, actually, one more question. What, um, at that time, on that evening, um, what is the policy as far as the admission for underage people? You're not letting in underage people at all, right? No, no one under 21 is allowed in after nine o'clock. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, anything further from the licensee? Um, Mr. Green, I just want, want to ensure that you got my email this morning. I did, and it was forwarded to the board this morning as well. Very good, because um, I know the board has asked about the policy of the bar with respect to um, preventing underage patrons, which I, I did send you an email on a previous occasion with Correct. respect to that policy. But this is a more comprehensive policy that I sent over. Thank you for that. It has been shared with the board and it will be placed on the licensee's file. And a video tape, the video from that night will be dropped off this afternoon. Thank you. And that will be forwarded to the board as well when we receive it. With that, Thank the, you. Board, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number five, Cork and Tip Tavern, Inc. Doing business as Tavern at the end of the world, located at 108 Cambridge Street in Charlestown. Due to the incident, December 17th, 2022, assault and battery, patron on patron, 
in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Hi, Paul. Paul Griffin is present. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Griffin. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, Lieutenant Detective Troy again. Thank you, Lieutenant. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Can you please, oh, have we lost Mr. Griffin? No, I'm here. Oh, I see you there. Great, thank you. You moved around. I will say though, our, our owner is trying to get in, but he's just a little, he's away right now. But he, he might come in if he's available. Oh, okay, uh, is, is his testimony necessary to continue or? No, 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 I was there the whole time, yeah. Thank you, then can you both please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Lieutenant Detective Troy, you can please proceed with the police report. Uh, reading from a report authored by uh, Officer Stephen Pacuso on, um, on uh, December 17, 2022, it reads as follows. While well assigned to the uh, of 416, Officer Pascudo uh, responded to Tavern at the End of the World for a report of a past assault. Officer spoke to Mr. Stephen Kearney, who said he was punched in the face by an unknown, uh, a male unknown to him with a closed fist while sitting in the bar room with friends. Uh, Mr. Kearney, Mr. Stephen Kearney had minor swelling to his eyes from being struck and did not require any further treatment at this time, at that time. Uh, Stephen Kearney does not know why he was struck, but suspected an individ the individual left uh, the area in a vehicle. Uh, bartender Paul Griffin advised Mr. Kearney that he would contact the police to report the incident. Mr. Griffin stated the individual who believes to be a Brad Hogan, possibly from the Everett area, is a suspect in the assault. A check of CGIS revealed only one Bradley Hogan in the area uh, in the age range of, age, age range of 30, 25 to 35 uh, from Malden. Mr. Griffin uh, stated Brad had frequented the bar two or three times and also had issues uh, with other patrons. Uh, the bartender Paul Griffin was forthcoming and helpful with the information needed by the officer. Uh, the identity of the suspect is unclear by the, to the victim Mr. Carney was advised that he could seek further complaint with Charleston Court. Sergeant McHale responded to the scene and issued a uh, license premise violation for patron on patron assault. And that's the extent of the report. Thank you. Mr. Griffin, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yep. So on, on Friday, December 17th, around 12.45 a.m., there were 25, 30 people in the bar. Myself and another bartender working. There were two groups of customers sitting in the bar room area that were having what appeared to be a heated discussion. I decided to ask one of the guys, Bradley, to leave as he was getting a bit animated and I felt it might turn into an argument. He put on his coat and left very peacefully, uh, saying goodnight, absolutely no force was necessary. Then approximately 15 or 20 minutes later, as the camera put it, show, put it shows, Bradley came back into the bar behind another entering customer. He ran over to slap the person from the other group that he was having the heated discussion with earlier. Then he ran back, right, right back out of the bar. The police were called and the report was made. We have heard nothing from either customers since. In our, in, a, in our opinion, there were no major injuries, but maybe Stephen's pride is a bit hurt. It's important to say, uh, I've saved all the video footage of the incident and I can send it over to you whenever you need it. Uh, we've never experienced an incident like this before. So uh, we have put some protocols in, in place just in case. We now hire a door guy every weekend on uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday just to keep, keep on the door for IDs and checking people as they go in. On quieter nights, when there are only two bartenders working, uh, if somebody has to ask somebody to leave, that bartender will stay on the door for at least 20 to 30 minutes in case they come back in. We've increased our cameras from six to eight and uh, just to cover all, all blind spots inside and outside the bar. And uh, also we've got a new, put, new front door put in with windows so we can see who's coming and going throughout the night. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Um, Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? Thanks, Danny. Uh, thanks, Mr. Griffin. That's very helpful. Um, one question in the police report, it states that um, Brad had has been in the bar three or four times and also had issues with other patrons. Can you just describe that a little bit? What you yes, meant by uh, that? That's, that's the first I've heard of any issues, but he's he's known to us. Both, both groups are known to us. Uh, okay. Both groups are known to us, but I've 
definitely had no no other issues with him before. Okay. I, I just knew who he was. Okay, so you didn't state that. No, I, I don't know if it, was a mis, if it was a misunderstanding when I gave the report to. Okay. The okay. Um, I don't have any other questions. Um, Commissioner Curry or Commissioner Saxon. I don't have any questions. Thank you, Commissioner Saxon. No questions for me. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Griffin, you may submit any video um, to the board at licensing board at boston.gov and the record will remain open uh, through the end of business tomorrow. The board will vote Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Okay, I'll email that on this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. The board will take this under advisement as well. Calling item number six, HSI MCA Boss FB LLC, doing business as Santarpio's Pizza, located at Logan Airport Terminal C in East Boston, during the incident December 27th, 2022, over service of alcohol to patrons in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64. Who's present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Secretary Green, Attorney Trick Fonsworth with Boston and Whiteson on behalf of the licensee. And with me this morning is Vincent Labono, who's the Senior Director of Operations. Uh, Joan Bennett, who's the Senior Managing, Senior Manager for Licensing. And Gabrielle Zupari, who's a paralegal. I think all of their, I'm just making sure, Vincent, are you on? Yep, we Video? see Vincent. Yes. Okay, perfect. I, okay, I see, okay. Yep. Um, Great. Thank you very much. That's, that's who I have. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Attorney Farnsworth. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I am. Thank you, Detective Hernandez. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Detective Lynn Gallagher, if need be. Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yeah. Thank you. I do. Detective Thank you. Detective Hernandez, you'll be reading the police report into the record? Yes, sir. I'll be reading from the uh, initial report authored by the state police uh, trooper Baptiste. They weren't able to be here today. Um, responded to gate C-34 on report of intoxicated individuals not, not allowed boarding. Had conversation with Tyler Anderson and Braden Anderson, who both appeared highly intoxicated. They stated their flight was delayed and they went to some tapios and ate and drank and waiting for their flight. Both were taken into protective custody without incident, transported to F1 Logan, booked, allowed use of their phone, photographed and placed into a secure cell. Braden Anderson submitted to a PBT and registered 0 0.227 and Tyler Anderson registered 0 0.231 on his PBT. No further action required. That's from the state police. And then we wrote, uh, I wrote a, uh, Awesome police and its report on Wednesday, January 11, 2023, Lieutenant Detective Adrian Troy, Sergeant Detective William Gallagher, and Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to the BPD License Permit Unit, along with MSP Troop, Trooper Ember, Ember Moski, responded to Centarpios located at a Logan Airport Terminal C. Detectives went there to speak to staff regarding an overservice of alcohol to two patrons incident that had occurred on Tuesday, 12. 27, 2002, refer to MSP report 20220F10950950. Uh, detectives spoke to person in charge, Ms. Cassandra Pepe, who stated she was unaware of the incident. Ms. Pepe was informed by detectives to preserve any surveillance video of this incident. Ms. Pepe was also advised to remind staff to monitor the consumption of alcohol by patrons. As a result of the incident, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued license permit inspection notice 060. 101 for over service of alcohol to patrons. This would be a sign for an accepted notice. So. Thank you, Detective Attorney Farnsworth. Would you like to address the alleged incident? Yes, um, I just have a few questions for Detective Hernandez. Uh, Detective, uh, when you went to San Tapios, that was two weeks after this alleged incident? It was on January 11th, so maybe, yeah, a little bit closer to weeks. Okay, yeah. and okay, and the um, the staff at Centopios was cooperative when you were visited? Yes, ma'am, very. Okay, perfect, thank you. And then just turning to the Mass State Police report, um, it states that these two individuals, um, 
stated their flight was delayed. They went to San Tapio's, ate and drank, waiting for their flight. Uh, this report does not state what they ate, correct? No, ma'am, it does not. And it does not state what they drank, whether it was alcohol or non-alcohol. No, ma'am, it doesn't. And it doesn't state how many drinks they had. And nor does it state how long they were allegedly at San Tapio's. No, ma'am, but it does um, give you the alcohol, the alcohol level um, on there. You correct. I know that few they were intoxicated, <laughs> and these two in intoxicated individuals made a statement, highly intoxicated individuals that they yeah. were ate and drank, <laughs> but we don't know what they ate or drank. How no, long? No, ma'am, I wasn't there. No, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I just also want to point out on Tyler Anderson's arrest report. It notes that his medications he's on. Um, are you familiar with what that drug is? Uh, no, ma'am, I'm not a doctor. Okay. Um, I'll just suggest that it, it's an antidepressant. You should be drinking. Uh, that's it. That's all I have for Detective Fernandez. I just have a couple of questions um, for Joan. First, I'll start with Joan Bennett. Um, Joan, could you just tell the board what your title is with the uh, and who you work for? Sure, I work for HMS Host Corporation. I am the senior manager <clears throat> of licensing, so I handle all of the business, liquor, lottery, and tobacco licenses for the company. Okay, and HMS Host, um, just for background, what do they do? Um, we're a large food and beverage airport concessionaire. Um, we have concessions in 30 of the busiest airports in the United States, and we hold approximately about 600 liquor licenses throughout the United States. Um, and as a result of this incident, did you conduct a uh, search of your records for any credit card receipts? We did. We had our information technology team search all of our credit card receipts, um, which they prepared an Excel file and we could not locate a credit card receipts for either of the customers. Okay. And is there a video at this location? There is not due to connectivity issues. Okay. Um, that's all I have for Joan. And then I just wanted to ask uh, Vince, uh, Vincent a few questions. Uh, Vincent, could you, again, just for the board, state uh, what your position is with the company? Uh, I'm the Senior Director of Operations for Logan Airport. Okay. And then just for purposes of alcohol training, can you just describe who's trained and, and just really what your policy is and what you tell all the staff? Yeah, so our policy is um, everyone has to have a surf safe alcohol course uh, prior to getting on the floor. Um, it's all monitored by myself in HR um, 30 days before the expiration date. Uh, the general manager gets notified for that uh, bartender or server to be renewed the certification. Um, we pay for it and we do the training here at the office inside the Logan Airport. Um, if they let it expire, we don't let them go on the floor. So we're, re we're really on top of it. And uh, we have, uh, we, we talk about in pre-shift meetings every single day and uh, but we are really on top of the policies and paperwork with H1 Right, And if anyone is showing any signs of, um, you know, intoxication or having too much, is there a policy or what is the staff told to do for that? Well, we don't, obviously we don't serve it, then we get the manager involved. And if the customer um, shows any kind of aggression, we call the state police, uh, which is on, prop on property. Um, and then just for location over at the airport, this um, this gate that these two individuals were at is C-34. And can you describe where Santapio's is located? Uh, Santapio's is, is near gate 21. It's at the Hammerhead, uh, completely at the last establishment um, in Terminal C at the Hammerhead side. Okay. And Santapio's has been open since when, approximately? 
that's uh, after COVID, it opened before COVID uh, for a couple of weeks until it was shut down in March 2020. And it was opened about maybe nine months ago. And you've had no problems at San Tapio's location? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, that's all I have for witnesses. Um, I don't know if you have questions before I summarize. Thank you, Attorney Farnsworth. Yes, we can move to questions from the board. Uh, Chairman Joyce, any questions? Attorney Farnsworth, so there's no video. There's no credit card receipts. Does anyone who works there or who worked there that day remember seeing these two individuals being served at this location? They do not, and they were asked, and both Joan and um, Vincent can confirm that. So what's the policy when, um, uh, did, did the state police come back after they were denied, um, um, denied getting on their flight? The first we heard of this incident was when the Boston police, Sergeant Detective Gallagher and Detective Hernandez came two weeks later. We did not know no, anything. No one knew that these two um, individuals who said that they were eating and drinking at San Tapio's didn't get on their flight and then were arrested for um, intoxication? No. Okay. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Curry? Um, is there a video set up here? Or like, I, I, can you tell me a little more about this connectivity issue? Yeah, so I'll, I'll let uh, Vince, since he's there at the airport, to describe it. So 75% of our locations do have uh, connectivity for videos. Um, Santapio is in a few other locations. Uh, a few Starbucks locations do not. Um, the connectivity with the, uh, we, we use a, a big data uh, base on it and uh, just does not connect in Santapio is in three different Starbucks locations. Okay, are there cameras there? We don't have, we don't have a setup because they don't have internet uh, for the cameras to, for the navigation for the the modem. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you, Commissioner Saxon. Any questions? Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you, and Attorney Farnsworth, do you have anything further? I would just. Um summarized by saying that there's no evidence of over service at this location. Um, you know, we looked honestly and couldn't find that these two individuals were at Santapio's on this date. Um, and even the police reports don't say, you know, what they ate and drank, how long they were there. I um, mean, I think the standard, as you know, is that an individual has to exhibit signs of intoxication and then be served um, on the premises for a uh, violation to be found. And um, we just don't even, you know, we can't um, say they weren't on the premises because um, <clears throat> we don't have video, but we don't have any evidence nor did the police that these two individuals were on the premises. So, or that they were overserved on the premises, I guess is the key. So I would request that you find no violation. Thank you. With that, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your time. Calling item number 7348, Congress LLC doing business as Drink Sportello Menton located at 348 Congress Street, date of the incident, December 15th, 2022. Bottle service violation, premise providing hard alcohol to patrons, punch in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64 and expired ISD in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64 and Boards Rule 1.02B. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, uh, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Adam Barnowski, 255 State Street in Boston. With me today is uh, Roberto Cibrian Stockbridge, who is the Director of Operations. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Detective William Gallagher. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Detective Hernandez, if needed. Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Thank you, Sergeant Zetip Gallagher. You may please proceed with the police report. Yes, good morning. On 12-15-2022, 
at 9.50 p.m., Sergeant Detective William Gallagher, Detective Eddie Hernandez signed license premise suit for conducting a license premise inspection of Sportello Drink at 348 Congress Street. Inside the premise, detectives observed a table near the front entrance at the lower level bar. On the table was a punch bowl half filled with a red colored liquid. They were empty, clean glasses and a serving ladle as well. Detectives asked the manager, Michael Dudas, about the punch bowl. Mr. Dudas replied that patrons could make themselves a drink while they were waiting. Detectives inquired as to the contents of the bowl and informed that it was a rum punch. Detectives inquired Mr. Dudas whether the premise was allowed to conduct bottle service of which he was unaware. Detectives informed Mr. Dudas that he would have to stop the practice of allowing patrons to make their own free alcoholic beverages because it violated ABCC rules on free alcohol to patrons, as well as violated boss license board rules on bottle service, patrons having control of alcohol source. In addition, bottle service was not allowed on Sportello or drinks current common eviction licenses. As detectives inspected the premises license, they also observed that the ISD had expired back on 3-24-2002. This was brought to the attention of Mr. Judas. As a result, the detectives had observed Sergeant Gallagher issued license premise inspection notice number 05999 for teller drink for bottle service violation premise providing free self-service alcohol for patrons and the expired special service certificate Mr. Dudas signed for and accepted the notice, and uh, the punch bowl was removed prior to us leaving. And those are the facts. Thank you. Attorney Barnowski, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yes, uh, thank you. So I do have a, a few questions for the sergeant detective as well as the licensee, but I wanted to provide a few notes at the outset, which I think the testimony will show. Mm -hmm. So the licensee is a full service restaurant and bar. They have no violations before this board or the ABCC. They don't have bottle service. Bottle service is not part of their uh, operations or program. They don't plan to have it in the future. Um, on occasion, they do have a small bar station, as the sergeant detective uh, mentioned, that, that's attended by a designated employee. Uh, they serve specialty cocktails to guests who are waiting to get a permanent seat at the bar or the restaurant. Um, the evening in question, there was a specialty punch available for guests at a charge of $10 per drink. The same as the bar, customers are ID'd, they're charged for a drink if requested. There are no punch bowls available for guests. Guests are not allowed to serve themselves. Everything is, is conducted in the same way it would be at a bar. Uh, it is worth noting that in the uh, uh, Sergeant Detective's testimony, as well as the police report, there is no... Um, inclusion of a, there was nobody that witnessed, no police officer that witnessed an employee serving themselves. Uh, we believe that the employee who was cited uh, in this document, who is no longer with the company, either misspoke or there was something lost in translation there. Uh, we do have a printout from the bar in, uh, uh, from the bar in the evening in question uh, that it was uh, sent to attorney Green in advance of this uh, meeting, which, which does show the punch sales that were made on December 15th. Um, on the certificate of uh, occupancy issue, the company did have a CO for the date uh, in question. Uh, it was uh, issued, but it was not on display. Uh, we also sent a copy of this CO to Attorney Green in advance. It shows an effective date of December 1. Uh, so, so with that, I do, I do have a, a few questions for Sergeant Detective Gallagher, uh, if, if it pleases the board. Uh, Sergeant Detective, so uh, you were correct, uh, or you, you were on site that evening, correct? Yes, sir. And, and can you let us know, was the licensee and staff cooperative that evening? Yes, sir, they were. And, and did you witness any customers serving themselves from the drink station? No, sir. Okay, thank you. No, no more questions for, for the officer. I do have a question uh, for Mr. Cyprian Stockbridge. Uh, so, uh, Roberto, could you uh, just uh, state your name for the record and your role with the company? Of course. Uh, so, my name is Roberto Cibrian Stockbridge, C-I-B-R-I-A-N, last name Stockbridge, pretty English spelling. Um, one quick note, uh, I was described as the director of operations. I am not the director of operations. I'm the general manager for this establishment, uh, specifically drink where the infraction potentially occurred. Um, on the evening in question, I was on site 
Uh, I was not at the front door overseeing that. We had had a couple of people call out sick, so I was bartending behind the bar at a very busy section of the bar um, and was not able to oversee the beginning, the uh, entryway uh, of my own volition, but the director of operations, Michael Dudas, was on site acting as the door person and overseeing all aspects of it. Thank you, and thank you for the clarification on, on your uh, title with the company. So uh, are you are you familiar with, with the way the company handles service of uh, of punch bowls or drinks at this location in the restaurant? Yes, um, we have two options. Uh, one, which we have not done since this particular night to be on the safe side, uh, which is we do offer punch service for, we used to offer punch service for guests that were waiting for seats at the bar. It was only to be consumed in the standing room area, which is inside our premises and well within our jurisdiction. Um, the punch is available for $10 per person. We have a list of what's in the punch. So that way, in case there's any allergies or any guests with issues, they are not offered it or cannot have it. Uh, we do offer punch bowls to purchase while they are seated as guests at the bar or for pre-purchase for private, semi-private events. Um, we have sold a couple of those in recent months, but we have not done any punch service whatsoever other than pre-purchase for events since this incident occurred. Thank you. And with with the, uh, with the punch service you're describing, in any instance, uh, at any location served within the restaurant, uh, are there any opportunities for patrons to serve themselves? Absolutely not. There's a person on site directly in front of that, guarding the door, guarding the punch at all times. There is no point at any point where anyone could ever serve themselves. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions for the licensee. Thank you very much. We'll turn to questions from the board. Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? Uh, Detective Fernandez, Sergeant Gallagher, did you see anyone serving themselves? We got there, Madam Chair. The uh, there was no one waiting. Everyone was sitting down. The punch bowl was inside the door. Uh, there was no one standing there, you know, giving punch out. We uh, we did uh, we did take a picture of the punch bowl as as we found it. There's no one standing near it. There is also a uh, as counsel stated. There is also a uh, it looks like a recipe list of what's in it. And as you note down the bottom, there is no price tag. Uh, the ladle was right there. Uh, the manager that night told us it was self-service. While you waited, you could make yourself a drink. He, he never said anything about $10. He said, he never said anything about someone serving alcohol and they quickly removed it. There was no confrontation over it. It, uh, like I said, it is what it is. Okay. Yeah, there was so nobody. It was, un it was unmanned. Nobody. Go ahead. Sorry. Nobody. Sorry. No, I was going to say that there was nobody monitoring it. It was just there. Right. And how long did I know this manager no longer works there, sir? But how long did he work there? Um, he worked for the company for at least three years, is my understanding. So he would have been or should have been familiar with the rules and regulations of the board? I would assume so, yes. You would assume so? Or did he report to you? I reported to him. I oh, wasn't. I, I wasn't in the habit of asking my bosses questions like that. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, you've worked for the company for a number of years. Is it safe to say that, or maybe your attorney can answer it, um, that the employees are trained in the rules and regulations of the board, in the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, we go through extensive training. We all have to do tips and serve safe. We all have to have that certification at all points and all times. Um, we make sure that we follow every rule and regulation to the dot, if, we, if, if at all possible. Okay. So does it seem, um, d does that training include whether or not um, alcohol can be left unattended? Yes, it does. It should never be left unattended. Um, I can okay. safely vouch that he, it was not left unattended. I had full view of the entire situation. Michael Dudas was at the front door the entire night, was there with the punch directly in front of him the entire night. Okay. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon. Um, is there a service area um, described in your uh, you know, description of premises file with the board in that area? Um, I do not know what's in the uh, specific paperwork on that one. Are there cameras in that area? Just to, and is there- There are cameras on there? premise, but I do not know if there's a camera pointed directly at the front door. I would have to look into it.
And I know, um, depending on when the description of premises was, was written, sometimes they, they become more specific, um, but I'd be curious to see what it says in this case. Mr. Curran, I, I can answer that if, if, if you'd like. Yep. So it is. It, it does look like it's a, a you know a historically uh, broad description uh, on premises as described: first floor, one room bar, basement for kitchen storage and offices, entrance and exits on Congress Street and rear alley. But just mention of one bar, correct? Well, it says one room and bar. One room. So, in so it bar? sounds like it says it, it says one room. So it's the room that's licensed, and yeah, they have a number of bars. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Curran, uh, I know the description is uh, kind of vague. This, this appeared to us just to be a table with a tablecloth yeah. on it, set by one of the columns uh, in the, that area by the front door. It didn't appear to be anything more than a table with a tablecloth on it. Yeah, it, I guess what I'm getting at is generally when, when a, a established like this has a satellite type service area, we usually, get no, you know, notice about that. It's described to us. So, okay. you know, we're talking about if, you know, there's many clubs that have satellites and they, 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 you know, this has become an issue where they've had too many or they have them in the wrong spot. They put them outside, okay. stuff like that. Um, so I'm wondering if this, this establishment has gotten clearance to have any kind of satellite besides the, you know, the physical, um, set bar, you know, putting out a table, stuff like that. Has there been any permission from us to, to have service areas of this type? Commissioner Curran, I, I mean, I, I might be able to work with the licensee and find out what their initial application looked like, look at the description of the license premise, and in the event that they decide to continue this practice, if there is some sort of discrepancy between what was licensed and, and their operations, we could certainly file an, uh, an alteration of premises to, to, to make that clarification for the board. Yeah, just because, I mean, from what I'm seeing, it, it doesn't look like much of a established service area. It looks like a table in front of a, co a concrete pillar, which would make it kind of awkward. Usually, you know, a service area has a behind for the employees and in front for the, the public, that kind of thing, you know, storage areas plumbing, whatever, you know? Um, so that's, that's what I'm seeing uh, being kind of problematic here. So thank you. Any further questions from the board? Anything further from the licensing? Nope. Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Following item number eight, Sullivan Saloon LLC doing business as Sullivan's Tap located at 168 Canal Street, dated the incident December 10th, 2022. Person under 21 in possession of alcohol on premise in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 34A, 34C, and 64 to 64A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good uh, morning, uh, Michael Ford for the uh, licensee. And we should have uh, we should have Derek Maines, who's the assistant manager, and the person with the uh, personal knowledge. I see him uh, on the Zoom. Yep. Thank you. We see Mr. Maines, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department. Sergeant Detective Gallagher, I do not have this report in my packet. If this is our incident, I have it, sir. I have it. Okay. Thank you, Jack Hernandez and Sergeant Jeff Gallagher. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of this incident who wish to testify this morning? Can you all please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Thank you, Detective Hernandez. Will you be reading the police report, Mr. Record? Yes, sir. I'll be reading uh, from a police report authored by uh, Sergeant Detective Gallagher on 12 10 2002 at about 3 05. PM, sorry, Detective Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez signed to the license permission to conduct the license permit inspection of the Sullivan's Tap at 168 Canal Street. Inside the premise, the observed a young looking male drinking a bottle of Bud Light beer. Thinking that the male was under 21, detectives approached and identified themselves as BPD and requested ID. The male, who was later identified as Con Connor, Kilgannon of New York gave detectives a New York driver's license and his name with a date of birth of 4 5 1999. 
Detectives use a license verification device, which confirmed the ID to be fraudulent. Detective sees the ID, which we presented at court. Mr. Kilgannon's true date of birth is 4 5 2003. Mr. Kilgannon will be summoned to court for possession of fraudulent registry document and person and 21 possession of alcohol. Detectives alerted staff to the, as to their findings. Mr. Kilgannon's fake ID scanned as valid with their scanner. Um, as a result of what detectives had observed, signed Detective Gallagher issued license for inspection notice 059990 to sell its staff a person under 21 person of alcohol on premise. Ms. Stephanie C Cioni signed for and accepted the notice. That is all. Thank you very much. Attorney Ford, would you like to address the alleged incident? Uh, just a few questions for the detective. Uh, detective Hernandez, was it about a couple of hundred people uh, there that uh, that evening. I don't, I don't have that number in front of me. So it was it was a busy night, though. A busy night, and everything else was in order. And there was this one person that was found to be underage, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And um, when you took a look at the, uh, the ID, it really needed to be scanned in order to determine uh, its authenticity, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, and licensee cooperated? Fully. Okay. Uh, thank you, Detective. I don't have anything further. Um, I do have um, one person to testify. Mr. Maines, are you there? Can you hear me? I am here. All right. Uh, just introduce yourself uh, to the board. Derek Maines, uh, Assistant Manager, Sullivan Tap. And uh, were you working on December 10th? I was. And it was about a 341 occupancy, correct? Yeah, 341 is the capacity. Um, how many did you let in? I'd say about 210. Okay. And uh, you were there the entire evening? I was. Okay. Now, um, you, heard that the, you, you heard that the officers approached a group of about uh, four people. Is that fair to say? I would say, yeah, about four kids. And as a about result four, of that, were you able to observe and see the person that turned out to be underage? Well, once I was made um, aware of what was happening, I was able to um, see, and, and the, everybody looks young to me, I'm old, so. Okay, and uh, what was the, we'll just talk about what was happening that evening and then move on to what you're doing uh, moving forward. What was uh, being done to um, ensure um, the age of 21 was being adhered to? Well, that day was a pub crowd throughout the city of Boston. So we knew, you know, it's gonna be a lot of younger kids. So I made sure before we opened that I went to all my door guys to make sure that you ID everybody, we have the scanners, you ask for backups for anything out of state. And if they, if, if it doesn't look right, don't take it. And were you using, uh, were you using scanners that evening? ID? Yes. Yes, we have two, one at each door. Do you recall what the name, what type of scanners those are? Token. And they're fairly expensive, right? Yeah, I think they cost about five thousand a piece. I'm not sure. Okay. Now, when the off, when the detectives rather uh, called this to your uh, attention, uh, what if anything did you go and do with respect to your door amendment right at that moment? Well, well, I went back down and reiterated what we had talked about earlier in the day about making sure that you ask for backup. Do you have any questions? Just don't take it. If, you know, if it looks fake, I mean, they scan everything. We scanned everything that day. And that's how that one got in. They, we scanned it and it took it. And, and let me just ask you on the scanners. Are these, are these old scanners? How old are these scanners? Probably about, I would say a year old, give or take. All right. And they detect fakes and passbacks and the like? Fakes, passbacks, and also um, if it if it's an expired ID, it won't take. It'll tell you. All right. And um, every night, do you have a uh, meeting with all of your door staff and uh, and 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 service uh, individuals? Yes, we do. And do you we review? discuss what happened that day. We review the day. We talk about what's you know what happened. Most of the time, there's no incident, so there's not much to say. And you, you know, you tell people you did a great job tonight. That oh. night, you know, you got to tell them, reiterate what our policies are, and keep going with the same thing. Okay, Mr. Maines, I don't have any further 
uh, questions um, for you. Uh, turn it over to the board. Thank you, Attorney Ford. Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? Yes, so this was a New York ID that's, that's scanned as valid? Yes. So what's your policy with out-of-state IDs that scan valid? We asked, or... well, well, we asked if, if when they're young, like, like 25 and under, we always ask for a backup, which could be a credit card. A lot of people don't have a picture ID, but um, so that's, that's our policy. Did you do that here? Yes. I okay. asked the door guys, but that day was a pub crawl. So we, I made sure that we were asking for backups on any out of state ID. Okay. No other questions. Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon. Um, maybe just more in the way of comment to, you know, we're seeing it time after time that, and you saw it here, the, the person who's using the fake ID has their own name on the fake ID. So asking for credit card as a backup really isn't gonna work anymore. So I think okay. we need to find other ways to, to back up. Um, and, you know, just to reiterate the the only thing that really is gonna cover you is to insist on them getting a, a mass ID or mass license or, um, you know, a lot more international travel, people have passports, you can ask for that, so. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Nothing further. Thanks. Thank you. And board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. And calling item number nine, GRNARK of Mass LLC, mm -hmm. doing business as Ramsey's Kitchen, located at 776 Boylston Street, dated the incident December 31st, 2022, blocked fire exit tables and chairs in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.06a. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, thank you, Attorney Green. This is uh, Attorney Gene Richard for the licensee. Uh, with me is the general manager of the uh, premises, uh, Michael Botello. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? William Gallagher. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Dr. Hernandez, if needed. Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Sergeant Detective Gallagher, you may please proceed with the police report. Yes. On 1231 2022 at 6.52 p.m., Sergeant Detective William Gallagher, Detective Eddie Hernandez, assigned to the licensed premise unit, conducted a licensed premise of Ramsey's Kitchen at 776 Boylston Street. Inside the premise, detectives made observations, blocked fire exit in the dining room, Detectives observed an occupied table chair. Four patrons be sitting in front of a marked fire exit. This was brought to the attention of the manager, Mike Botello, who stated he would take corrective action. As a result, the detectives had observed Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued a license premise inspection notice number 059783 to Ramsey's for the blocked fire exit. Detective Hernandez did provide a picture of the, uh, the exit as, as we found it that evening. I want to add that it, it was New Year's Eve that evening. Restaurant was very busy and uh, they, they responded quickly. Those are the facts. Thank you very much. Attorney Richard, would you like to address the alleged incident? Uh, thank you, Attorney Green, uh, Madam Chair, and members of the board. Um, I just have a couple of questions for um, uh, uh, Sergeant Detective Gallagher. Uh, uh, you were there present that night, is that correct? We, we couldn't hear, I couldn't hear yes. you. Yes, can, can you hear me? And, yep. Yes, now I can, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and the uh, general manager uh, cooperated with uh, you and uh, Detective Hernandez? Yes, he was. Okay, and did you or uh, did you notice how far the table and chair were from the exit door? Within five feet. Okay. And did you uh, say something to uh, General Manager Botello uh, concerning how far the table should be from the exit? We did. And what did you tell him? It needed to be more than five feet. Okay. 
a minimum of five feet or or at least at least five feet. That's what the fire department requires. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you. Nothing further at this time. Um, if it please the board, I would now uh, ask some questions of Mr. Botello. You may proceed. Thank you. Um, Mr. Botello, you uh, uh, are the general manager of the premises, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, you were present that night uh, when the officers were inspecting the premises? Yes, sir. Uh, could you tell the board then what happened on the uh, New Year's Eve uh, early evening uh, regarding your interaction with the police uh, uh, inspectors, officers? Yes. I was informed uh, that there was an officer at the front uh, that was there to speak with me. I came out and he identified himself as uh, Sergeant Detective Gallagher. Um, it was about 6.45 in the evening. We were extremely busy for New Year's Eve. And uh, Detective Gallagher at that point um, was in the lobby looking at the licenses to make sure that all of our posted licenses were within date, uh, which they were. And then he uh, proceeded to point in the direction of a table that was near a fire exit and said that that table was um, was not at least five feet from the door. And I said I wasn't aware that it had to be uh, more than five feet, but that I would certainly move it. Table had been uh, in that position for as long as I had been working for uh, Ramsey's Kitchen. And uh, so I, I signed the notice and it was fairly quick. Um, and that was it. And what did you do in regards to the table and when did you do it? Once the patrons that were there left, uh, I pulled the table back um, to where it was uh, more than five feet. And, um, and has the table stayed in that position since that time? That's where we position it when we start. There are times because it's not a mounted table that guests will shift things, especially if they have uh, high chairs or small children, but uh, we always maintain that distance so that people, it's an open egress. And um, what was your, before speaking with uh, the officers that evening, what was your understanding of how far the table and chairs should be from the exit uh, at a minimum? And uh, what was the basis of that understanding? Well, my last notification that I had read that came from someone in the licensing board was that the requirement is four feet, not five feet. Um, and three days prior to uh, Detective Gallagher, Gallagher's visit, I had a visit from uh, David uh, Johnson, who is the uh, building inspector for the city. He had did, did his inspection in which that is also included, egresses, uh, fire exit signs, um, extinguishers, so on and so forth. And there was no mention 72 hours prior that there was a violation or that the table was in the wrong place and nothing's changed. All the tables are the same as they've been, from my understanding, from the approved floor plans from day one. So, um, there so just the seemed kind of confusion. And the table was not moved between the inspection on uh, on December 28th until the time that the uh, police officers on New Year's Eve uh, uh, requested that it be changed or directed that it be moved. Is that correct? No. Correct. They're not moved. I mean, they have they're perfectly lined up. If you work for a Chef Ramsey, understand. I mean, everything's perfect lined up every single day. Uh, those tables stay in line. Um, they're never moved. Um, and since since the uh, receiving the uh, uh, hearing notice for today, have you reviewed the uh, uh, the approved floor plan for the premises, the last approved floor plan in I relation have. to where those tables uh, are placed? Yes, sir. And and what what did you see there? Are the uh, tables in your view consistent with the approved floor plan? Yes, sir. Nothing has changed. We but, haven't purchased any new tables. They're all in the same position. Um, okay. And the main thing is, is that on either either aisle, on either side of the table, 
it requires a 36 inch uh, egress for, you know, handicapped or wheelchairs to be able to maneuver through on either side. So we have to maintain that as well. And where that table is positioned, um, 36 inches on either side, four feet from the door, all work. Yeah. Well, but it, I know you've, I've asked and you've answered, but the table now is kept at least five feet from the door. Is that correct? We do keep that five feet from the door. Thank you. Nothing further at this time. Thank you, Chairman Joyce. Do you have any questions? Uh, just a request. Can you please submit a plan to the board um, with your egresses identified? Um, the one that you would have submitted to the fire department? Uh, we, we can do that, yes. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Kern? I do not. Thank you. Commissioner Saxon? None for me. Thanks. Thank you. The board will take this under advisement as well. Thank Those you. are all the items before the board this morning that will adjourn this hearing. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. You.